The combined air might of the United Nations is loosed upon war plants in Nazi-occupied Europe. While long-range heavy bombers range over Germany's once mighty industrial centers, fleets of fast, low-flying medium bombers strike at enemy installations in France. Target for today, an important airfield at Abbeville. Another squadron speeding across the English Channel bound for the Nazi naval supply depot at Rennes roars in from the coast, barely skimming the treetops. Again, the people of France get a heartening close-up of the Royal Air Force destroying the war plants of the invader. General Eisenhower, Allied commander in Sicily, and General Patton, who led the American 7th Army. Britain's General Montgomery. His famous 8th Army wrote a new and brilliant chapter into the Sicilian campaign. As these able United Nations military leaders confer in the field, the Axis wonders where next they will strike. Meanwhile, the roundup of Axis prisoners continues. Italians, deserted by their Nazi allies, are in the majority. Of some 400,000 troops opposing the combined United Nations forces in Sicily, more than 200,000 are now prisoners of war. In the shadow of the Stars and Stripes, they wait for ships that will transport them to Africa, to England, to America. For them, the war is over. In many American communities, civilian volunteers are responding to the nation's call for help in planting and harvesting vitally important food crops. The state of Maine enlists girls home from college to assist farmers in planting potatoes. Harvesting the string bean crop, thousands of bushels are gathered by the Volunteer Crop Corps. Sorted, graded, and packed, choice vegetables are sent to freezing plants, where they can be preserved for an indefinite time. Most perishable is the tomato crop. Ripened by an unusually warm summer, millions of pounds are rushed by trucks to nearby canneries. Tomatoes for United Nations forces in the field. America's army of civilian volunteers helping replenish the nation's food larders depleted by the demands of war. Beneath the flag of China and a portrait of its leader, Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek, Major General Claire Cheneau, representing the 14th United States Air Force, is honored by the people of Yunnan province for help in ridding the skies of Japanese raiders. With traditional gifts of food, the Chinese show their appreciation. A silver trophy with an American eagle is presented to the men of General Squadron. Chinese and Americans side by side 
united in the common cause. A Western Army camp solves the problem of transporting soldiers with the biggest motor bus ever built. A barracks on wheels. The huge triple-deck affair carries 250 men on a single trip. Entering by a door in the middle, the soldiers are seated on three levels. It might be a bit crowded inside, but 250 men in one bus is a crowd in anybody's language. American landing force striking at Munda, one of the strongest Japanese island bases in the South Pacific. Enemy planes dive bomb the force with little effect. They fail to stop the assault. Guided by friendly natives, the Americans in camouflaged battle dress land in force and establish a beachhead. Bringing tanks and heavy equipment, they plunge into the jungle to flank the enemy's airbase. Machine gun nests and snipers sent out by the Japs are blasted from the trees by American marksmanship. and machine guns drive the scattered remaining forces of the enemy into the sea. Thus did Munda fall to the men under General MacArthur, another stepping stone on the road to Tokyo. Tokyo.